Hi, and welcome to the Assembly Life Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance. Today, I want to do a video review of a brand new book that just came out called Retro Tech by the Nostalgia Nerd. So let's get started. Let's see what we have inside the box here. All right, it is the Nostalgia Nerds Retro Tech Computers, Consoles, and Games. All the greatest old systems from Atari to Xbox. I really like the format and the size of this book. It's actually fairly small, so you can take it with you. It's colorful, everything is crisp inside, and he's just got a really nice style of design for the book. So for each system in the book, Peter has laid it out so that you have a picture of multiple sides of the system, a description of the system, when it came out, how much RAM it had, and then approximately what its price was. And then he goes through some more description for each one with some additional pictures. And then one part I really like is for each gaming system, he has three games. The must-see game, which is the one that you need to look at just to see what the platform can actually do, and is usually the most spectacular looking. The must play category, which is the one that probably has the most playability as well as the most fun. And then he also has this really fun category called must avoid. And his descriptions are actually really funny for this section. So this is actually my favorite section for all of the gaming systems. So he has them all arranged in chronological order for when they came out. And he's tried to cover almost every major gaming system that was released during this time period. So, for example, starting in 1972 with the Magnavox Odyssey, we just go through the various systems and just describing each one. For example, here's the Apple II, 1977. And then he's got games for that. For the Apple II, he has Prince of Persia, Ultima IV, and Bouncing Kamungus, which I've never actually played before, but actually it makes me want to play it if it's really that bad. In the book, Peter Lee goes through all of the usual suspects from gaming consoles of the 70s, 80s, and 90s, including the Atari 2600, as well as the whole family of Nintendo, including the NES, the Super Nintendo, the Nintendo 64. But he also covers some more unusual platforms, one of which is the Vectrex with its unusual vector display. If I only had a couple quibbles with the book, it's maybe just in his choice of which ones to include and which ones not to include. So, for example, I did notice for the Apple II, the only one that he has in the entire book is just the original Apple II, instead of covering things like the Apple II GS, which was actually a major breakthrough and a change for the platform. Whereas for the Atari, he's got the 2600, he's got the 400, 800, as well as the later models such as the Jaguar and the Falcon. But that's just a minor quibble. I'm sure he had to make some trade-offs depending on the length of the book and the differences between the system. So I'm not going to fault him too much for that. I didn't find too many mistakes in the book at all. There was just a couple places where there was a few typos. I found one picture which wasn't in the correct location, um, and then a paragraph that looked to be repeated. But all in all, I would say he's done an admirable job of proofreading and making sure everything is accurate and correct. One of the things I really like about the book is that Peter is coming from a UK perspective. So although he does cover all of the systems that came out in the North American market, he also dives into the systems that were more unique to Europe and Asia. And this gives it more of an international flavor. And for example, some of these systems I'd never actually heard of, such as the MGT Sam Coupe from Miles Gordon Technology, which was released as a competitor to the ZX or ZX Spectrum and the Commodore 64. And this is a machine that I was completely unfamiliar with, but it was fascinating to read about the development of it and how it fared in the market, and even to see some screenshots of these games, such as Lemmings, Manic Miner, and Sphera. The book covers all the way from the early 1970s all the way through 
the 1990s and it ends up at the the very end with the Microsoft Xbox released in November 2001. At the back of the book is a brief section on handheld and portable gaming and although he doesn't go into a lot of detail on this since it's not the focus it's still fascinating to read about all of the companies such as Nintendo or Sega and what they were doing at the same time that they were releasing all these gaming consoles and computers. I got the book off of Amazon for $20. So what do I think of it? I think it's fantastic. I actually brought the book with me on a recent trip and I had several people on the airplane ask me what I was reading and I had to pry it out of their hands when I showed it to them. So if you're anyone who gamed in the 70s, 80s, or 90s, or if you just have any sort of interest in what was going on in gaming back then, it's well worth the money. There were a couple minor typos and a misplaced photo that might be nice to be corrected in a later edition, but those were just minor quibbles. And so I'd heartily recommend that if you don't already have a copy, you put it onto your holiday wish list. It also made me want to go out and try some of these games. So I'm going to spend the rest of the day at the Media Archaeology Lab playing around with the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. So thanks for watching.